The Fraser Valley is increasingly becoming a destination for home buyers in the Lower Mainland. Helping to guide and advise both buyers and sellers are the nearly 4,000 realtors who serve the area. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board's President Chris Shields and CEO Baldev Gill for a wide-ranging discussion covering everything from market trends to the value of using a professional realtor and to the use of technology to communicate with members. Here is an excerpt from that discussion. Chris, from your perspective, what are the things that you need to be paying attention to right now? As far as? Well, the next few months, as, as, we, as we move forward, and, and the trends that suddenly uh, visited themselves upon us once the pandemic hit, uh, they're going to accelerate. We're hearing more and more about companies that are saying, you know, the pandemic has proven that you don't have to come back into the office. Uh, and if you do, it, it'll be rarely, so there's going to be more and more pressure on the market to satisfy that need for larger properties. How do you, you know, help to keep people you know, uh, moving in the direction that they want to as far as their living and now working arrangements? Right. Well, I've always felt that it's a realtor's job to educate their clients so that they're better informed to make the decisions that, that they're faced with. But never has there been a more important time for that now, Stu. Uh, so I was meeting on Zoom last night with some new clients, for example, and instead of a face-to-face -face meeting at their kitchen table, we had a Zoom meeting. And one of the things that we described for them, uh, new buyers, first-time buyers getting into the market, to try and prepare them for what to expect, is we describe the market right now like a raging river. It's moving very fast. Mm -hmm. And our job as your realtors is to put the safety life jacket on you and the helmet <laughs> and tie ropes around you and, and jump into this with you, but to guide you through the whole crazy experience. And embrace yourself, like fasten your seatbelt, because it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride, but together we'll get through it. So it's, it's about educating our client, I would say, is primary importance right now. That's a great metaphor, because I think that that's probably the way that it feels for an awful lot of people, mm -hmm. because they're having to make such an important decision. They don't necessarily know how to weight what is the most important versus what are the things that you deal with as you move along. Uh, what's the greatest misconception that you're sort of um, encountering, especially from first-time buyers right now, in this crazy market? Well, I think misconceptions are, are really come along when they're undereducated. Yeah. You know, they think that they can put a lowball offer in or a subject to sale offer in on a property that's going to have 10, 20 offers on it. And it, it's just not feasible. So it's really about preparing them, as we said earlier, to have their ducks in a row and to be prepared to pull the trigger when the time is right, but to have done everything we can to mitigate the risk for them. Because there are, are definitely risks involved. And it, yeah. there's always been this, this scenario uh, ever since since I've been licensed and, and long before I got into the business, where you don't want your client to be uh, to purchase first and then not be able to sell and be stuck right. owning two homes and two mortgages, or to sell first and not be able to find something to buy and be left homeless. Right. So we, we never want our client to be faced with either of those scenarios. And it's a delicate balancing act that we have learned over the, the decades to guide our clients through that. But in markets like this, it's even more important to, to guide them away from those risks. And sometimes it's about having a backup plan or a safety net. If we sell first, which is recommended in this market, uh, could you live in your mom and dad's basement for a few months if necessary? Not that we would need to exercise that option, but do you have a backup plan so that if, if we're stuck, you know, bidding on properties until we get the right one for you, What's the backup plan? <laughs> yeah, as you were explaining that, you know, you can't have subject twos uh, if you're hoping to buy a house. I'm thinking, but aren't those supposed to be the safeguards yes. that, that ensure that you don't get caught in that no man's land? But you're saying that that is part of the reality of the it market It is part right of the now. reality, but there are things that a buyer can do to mitigate that risk. For example, we would always recommend a buyer do a home ins inspection before buying a property. So in this market, we might say, look, it might cost you four or $500 mm -hmm. to do a home inspection, but go ahead and do one before you submit the offer. And then before you, you submit yeah, the before offer, you sub it, so you might not get the property. Holy yeah. smokes. That's one, that's one option for a buyer to consider. Uh, also for sellers, for listing a property, we're, we're suggesting to sellers that they get a home inspection done before listing it and, that, and make it available to all the potential buyers. And that way, it's one less subject that a buyer has to put in an offer. Well, when you have 30 or 40 offers, though, wouldn't it be, you know, 
you'd go, why do I need to? I've got 30 or 40 different offers that I need that I can wade my way through. Well, or is that because you're, you're saying, no, 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 you still have a responsibility to ensure that this transaction is carried out uh, properly and that everybody is protected? I think it's more of a logistics. It just makes more sense for the seller to do it mm -hmm. in that um, it's about cooperating with all the parties and making the buyer feel confident that they're making the right decision. You don't want a buyer to have buyer's remorse either after getting an accepted offer and wondering, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. Right. Sounds like it's going to be a pretty exciting year ahead. Thanks for coming in and sort of giving us an update. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Thanks for having us, Stu. Right. Thank Thanks. you, Stu. Appreciate Thanks. it. And thank you for watching.